Hello, Diatribe community. What a pleasure to be able to speak with you today. There's really nothing better, at least in my opinion, than to be able to talk to a person with diabetes or someone who loves or supports a person with diabetes about new advances being made in the diabetes field, particularly new advances being made in diabetes technology. I'm Rich Bergenstahl, and I'm an adult endocrinologist, and I'm also the executive director of the International Diabetes Center, which is located in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I've long been an advisor to Diatribe and, and an admirer of the work of Diatribe, so I jumped at the opportunity to be able to lead off a dialogue about advances being made in continuous glucose monitoring and how I think, and I'm sure Diatribe feels, this is transforming the field of diabetes management. I hope this is gonna be a continuing dialogue and a series of discussions eventually back and forth between all of us. You can see my title for today, shedding light on your AGP report. I know that many of you out there are experts in diabetes technology already, so it's not my intention to talk to you about what is CGM, what does it mean, but I really wanna share today some pearls, some tips, some ways to just understand the glucose data that's coming out of continuous glucose monitoring and this thing we call the Ambulatory Glucose Profile Report or AGP report. All of us wanna do our best to optimize how our blood sugars are doing. And many of us started and many of you started off using blood glucose meters or monitors, finger stick glucoses, and now we're moving into an era of continuous glucose monitoring or CGM. And you'll, you'll, for, certain, you'll for certain remember the days when you were looking at writing numbers down and sharing it with your healthcare provider or trying to make sense of them yourself. And some people use log books and they line them up nice and neat in a row. Sometimes there was one test a day, sometimes two or three or four or five tests a day. And occasionally they'd be really organized in a neat fashion, but still when you were poking your fingers, we're dealing with three to six glucose data points to try to make sense of over time. Now, all of a sudden, we're in this era of up to 288 uh, blood sugar points in a day. That's every five minutes of blood sugar, that's 288 points in a day. And you can see up here at the top here, if you have three tests in that day, they might look good. When you look at from midnight to midnight, 288 blood sugars, you might be surprised. Oh gosh, there were some lows overnight. There were some highs out here after supper. I never would have seen those with just an intermittent finger stick. And now we're gonna take those 288 points. We're gonna put 14 of those days together. 14 times 288, that's over 4,000 blood sugars. So we better figure out a way to organize those blood sugars so it makes sense to you, it makes sense to your loved ones, it makes sense to your healthcare providers. We call that the Ambulatory Glucose Profile Report or the AGP Report. So here we go. There's a lot of data. There's new ways to look at that data. That's what we're gonna explore for the next couple of minutes. There were lots of glucose meters. You may have had one of these or even a newer version since this picture was taken of glucose meters, but I'm not gonna talk about those today. We're moving on to this field of continuous glucose monitoring, and I'm not even gonna go through all of these today, but there's four really good uh, options available in the United States today. Um, if we focus on the two on the left, the Abbott Freestyle Libre, the, the G6, and you come over with the G6 and you look up here and you say, how do they report the data? Well, they have a menu of different ways you can look at the data, but look at the arrow here. It's highlighting one called AGP report. Click there. 
here's the Abbott Freestyle Libre, a simple patch to put on your arm and swipe over and get the glucose values. They have a series of, of ways to look at the data. I highlighted again, the AGP report. So let's just talk about that AGP report as a standard way to really understand the thousands of data points coming out. Okay, we've got a lot of data, 288 points every day. What do we do now? How can we effectively use that data? Because that's what's really important, not just that we're piling up a whole lot of, of data. And so what we're gonna talk about in the next 10, 15 minutes is, first, let's standardize the data, be sure we all understand what the key CGM data is. Then let's organize it into a usable report. Number three, let's figure out how to analyze that report in a logical, systematic way. And then finally, it's no good to just have all of that if you don't figure out how to use it to actually optimize your glucose values and keep them in that range that you wanna be. Standardize, organize, analyze, and use the data effectively. So let's plow through this together. And I hope in some way in the future, we can go back and forth, back and forth, and even talk more about it. But let me lay the groundwork today at least. Standardize. And the International Diabetes Center, our big team, has spent a long time standardizing the data. And that this is not a history report, but I just feel compelled because many of you have lived through this. We've had finger sticks for some 40 years. We've actually had CGM, believe it or not, for 20 years, at least in 2000, it was introduced. 2006, it was officially approved. 2012, the International Diabetes Center uh, hosted the first meeting of experts to say, can we organize this data in a way, maybe we should use the ambulatory glucose profile. That was 2012 when we thought that's a good idea. Over the next five years, there were a series of consensus meetings and finally one in 2017 that got published saying, we think these are the 10 key glucose uh, metrics or measures and then two years later, not only were there measures, but there was a key article about, well, where should those measures be? Where do you want me to be to be safe um, and minimize my risk of diabetes complications? So those were the targets. And then finally, probably the biggest breakthrough and the reason I'm really talking to you today is because this time and range concept, this time of this, this ability to keep your blood sugars in a certain range has now really reached an important status um, or benchmark because the American Diabetes Association put it in their annual standards of care for all clinicians to start to understand, to say, these are 10 core metrics, there's targets, and there's a good report to start with to understand it. So that's the history of why we're having this dialogue about time and range, because it's a metric that many professionals, and I hope many of you with diabetes are really starting to appreciate the value of this. So what is the AGP report? How do we organize all that data into a report? Well, here it is. I know this looks small and tight and a lot of things. But when you've got thousands of data points, this is two weeks of CGM data put into one report and it's organized so that on the top are these metrics and targets, a lot of numbers that we just like to check and see how you're doing for visit to visit and for you to check too. And then the middle, is a picture of all those uh, values put together into one day, the profile, and at the bottom 
is every one of those 14 days, in this case, there's 13 of them that represent this ambulatory glucose profile. So that's the report. It comes out in one page. In the past, clinicians have had 20, 30 pages of data. We just wanted it to make it simple, and I hope you appreciate it too. When you look at these on your computer, there's a good one page report. It's standardized, it's organized, and we hope you'll think it's user friendly. But we want to hear from you and tell us what you think. Here's the top bar, the top panel. And remember, I said there were 10 things that we all should be comfortable with and know about when we're looking at these thousands of data points over two weeks. Here's what those 10 things are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. There's 10 points, and I'll just briefly, briefly, briefly tell you, the first two just say, do you have enough data? Do you have, do you have close to 14 days, between 10 and 14? And was the CGM really working during those 14 days. So just check that off and say, yep, my CGM was working. You know what an average glucose is, the average of all those thousands of values. Sometimes people are interested in that. They can keep track of it. I don't think it's a day-to-day -day measure we look at that much. Then there's something called glucose management indicator. We don't have time today to spend a long time on it, but you probably have heard of your, you know about your A1C, your average glucose. Well, this is the equivalent of estimating that A1C over uh, a three month period, but just using the two weeks of CGM data. It's called the glucose management indicator. It takes your 14 days of data and tells you what your A1C would be if you kept doing the same thing for the next 90 days or three months, you would have an A1C of about 7.3. So I think it's a good one for you to be aware of as you prepare for a clinic visit or getting your own A1C done. Then there's one called the glucose variability, and you all know what that means, the roller coaster. And unfortunately, everybody with diabetes goes through some roller coaster times here and there, up and down, wider than you think um, from the average. And don't worry too much about the number. We want it if it can be possibly 36 or less, that means there's less variability or less roller coaster, and that's a good thing. The lower, the better. Under 36 is a, is a, is a target to shoot for. Then no, really what I wanna focus is over on the right-hand side. Five of these 10 key things to know about your data our time in ranges. How much time are you spending in the target range, 70 to 180? We would like that to be as high as possible. Then we want less time where your sugars are high, less, very little time if possible when they're very high over 250, although we're all gonna, you're all gonna have those on occasion. It just happens. That's what's having diabetes is all about. And then Oops, sorry. And then we want to minimize the lows and the ones that are very low because the very low can be dangerous. So where do we really want these to be? Well, that's this green box is the targets. So really get to know this, please. We would like your time in target range to be 70% or more if possible. We want you to spend 16, 17 hours a day uh, in this 70 to 180. It's really hard. It's not easy. You won't be there right away. Like this individual I'm showing you, 49% of the time they were in range. We'd like it to be 70. So there's work to do, but we can do it together. Then we'd like the low ones um, under 70 to be under 4% of the time and the very low ones less than 1% of the time. So this person was having a lot of hypoglycemia. So that's the top bar. Some numbers, some numbers, focus over here on this bar 
and we'll go through that a little more in a minute. Why did we pick 70% to try to get your all as many of your glucose values as possible? Because we and others have done some research taking a lot of people with diabetes and saying, if you have 70% of your values in the time and range, time and target range, 70 to 180, 70% of the time over two weeks, over a month, over 90 days, you'll have an A1C of about seven, which is what a lot of us you know, are, are, are aiming for to try to get under seven so that you can minimize the risk of eye, kidney or nerve problems. If the time and range was 50, you'd have an A1C of eight. It's room for improvement, room to work that 50 gradually up to 70. Okay, so that's the top bar that we call the CGM metric. And I'll just show you it once more because these targets are just important for you to to keep in mind, time and range, TIR, can it be above 70% if at all possible? Time below range, TBR, you'll sometimes see it. Under 70, so that means 70 all the way down to, I think most of the sensors only read down to 40, but 70 to 40, we want that 4% of the values or 4% of the time and 1% of the time or the values at 50, under 54. Remember, 1% is about 15 minutes. 4% is just over an hour. And then above it, we want them to be less than a quarter of the values, less than 5% of them, very high ranges up over 250. So that's just a reminder again, as much in the time and range as possible with very few of them below that, but we know what's going to happen on occasion. It just is the nature of diabetes. Sometimes you'll hear these words I won't dwell on today, but this is called this is called level two hypoglycemia, level two hyperglycemia. Time below 70 is level one and two together. So sometimes you'll hear these levels, other times you'll just hear the names low, very low, high, very high. We kind of just like those names as more descriptive. 